Hey scholars, we're now going to take a look at the quality control standards of the firm and hopefully this will help me and help you pass the next CPA exam. Now, I look like I'm in deep water and those Crocs don't look like they're very happy with me. Help me, help me. Well, I'll put on my glasses so that I match the character. Do we look alike? Scary, huh? Yeah, well, anyway, I should have my blue tie on, I guess, right? Well, anyway, the help me, let's scroll down to the next page. So we're gonna move up and we'll take a look at the H. The H deals with such things as the firm should establish policies and procedures designed to provide reasonable assurance that you hired competent people, that their, that their capabilities in order to do the jobs we've been hired to do, and that we are all committed to ethics, which would include complying with all of the code of professional conduct, including the independent standards. It's necessary to perform engagements in accordance with the professional standards and applicable legal and regulatory requirements, as well as enabling the firm to issue reports that are appropriate in the circumstances. So this is classic example. How do you know you're competent even for promotion? We would have performance evaluations done at least annually. So you'll notice all new personnel must undergo background checks. All personnel will participate in annual goal setting and performance evaluations. And finally, each professional is evaluated on his or her attainment of agreed upon goals, demonstrated skills and behaviors, and adherence to Becker CPA firm's value system. And that's the H of help me. So let's move on to the next one. Oh, now we're down to the E. And when it comes to the E, the firm should establish policies and procedures regarding engagement and client acceptance, right? They should establish those procedures for the acceptance and continuance of relationships with the clients. What we want to do is we will not undertake or continue relationships and engagements, and we will only do it when the firm is competent to perform the engagement. We have the capabilities, the time, and the resources. We can comply with legal and relevant factors and has considered the integrity of the client. How would you do that? I would simply sit there and I would do background checks. I would look at their credit rating. I would look at newspaper articles. So prior to acceptance, you must evaluate the client, its business, and other related matters. This includes background investigations of senior management personnel as a whole, as well as the reputation. For continuing clients, the firm will perform formal client continuance acceptance which will result in the determination of risk levels. Depending on risk levels, you would obviously then determine how much work you can or can't do. So remember, background checks, credit ratings, those are kinds of things that we absolutely want to do. All right, we're ready to move on to the next item. So let's push that one up. And this is the L of help me. This is leadership's responsibility. Regarding leadership, the firm should establish policies and procedures designed to promote an internal culture based on the recognition that quality is essential. Such policies and procedures should require firm leadership, whether that be the managing partner or board of managing partners, the CEO or equivalent, to assume ultimate responsibility and to make sure that we communicate that. You know, you may want to do that through a town hall meeting. You may want to have that on your website as a video. You may want to be able to document that in any manner. You may be able to speak to people in small little groups or put out a webcast or possibly maybe just a memo on a regular basis. The chief compliance officer has responsibility for the entire audit practice, which includes our system of quality control. The chief compliance auditor supported by the managers of audit quality. The manager of audit quality is responsible for developing, communicating, and supporting the quality control system. The manager has responsibilities, which include updating the quality control handbook, which clearly indicates that you have documentation of this, of this effort and disseminating the information vis-a-vis -a, -vis a, a web-based training or emails or town hall meetings. Those are some of the fundamentals. Now, the next item that we want to go to is the P. So let's move up to that. There's our P, performing of the engagement, performance of it. And it says the firm should establish policies and procedures designed to promote it, to provide it with reasonable assurance. Of what? Of the following. The engagements are performed in accordance with professional standards and applicable legal and regulatory requirements. The firm issues reports that are appropriate under the circumstances. 
And to achieve that, we're going to look at some things. Obviously, compliance with AICPA and firm rules regarding such things as, say, confidential information, work paper documentation. So firm personnel must confirm their understanding of the AICPA and firm rules regarding such things as confidential information on an annual basis in circumstances where professionals involved in the audit are unable to resolve any issue. The issue may be elevated through the chain of responsibility to resolution all the way up to the chief compliance officer or the chairman. Let's move on to the next item, and that's the M, and that's the monitoring that we're going to do. Regarding the monitoring, the firm should establish a monitoring process designed to provide it with reasonable assurance that policies and procedures relating to the system of quality control are relevant, adequate, and operating effectively. Great ways to do that, peer review, right? That's one, and of course, your own internal quality review. So a firm will randomly select 5% of engagements annually to undergo an internal review, and the firm will provide training and guidance, and for common peer review inspection findings, include those where appropriate improvements are needed. So those are two great ways to make sure you're in compliance. And last but not least, we're going to flip up to the E. This is the ethical requirements. The firm should establish policies and procedures designed to provide it with reasonable assurance that the firm and its personnel comply with relevant ethical standards. What we're looking at is independence is most important, right? We wanna make sure that we're independent. And you gotta go every year because you bring in new clients. And are those new clients impairing anyone's independence? So we have to ask that question on a regular basis. So you must annually complete forms relating to independence, disclosure of all potential conflicts, such as personal investments, loans, and immediate family employment. All of those are important to maintain a high quality of internal control. Hopefully that gives you some insights and you're ready then to try an exercise on this area.